Welcome back, everyone, to another episode of Rental Regrets. As always, I am your host, Victor Nub, and today we are looking at Super Ghouls and Ghosts, developed and published by Capcom and released in the United States on November 28th of 1991. Uh, I always did love the box art for this game. I think it's it's unique enough from the rest of the series to really stand out, and yet somehow it looks completely off-brand for not only the series, but also Capcom in general. Uh, the publisher logo is even different. They had to... Well, at this point, they, they had established a familiar logo that everyone would recognize, and they've been using it for ages. But in this particular game, they had, you know, the little red logo with just a plain-looking Capcom USA on it. Very strange looking. Uh, I don't know if this is the only time it was ever used, but in the case of this particular game, it just, it does. This is the one I think of when I think of this particular logo, and it is very unusual. Uh, I don't have a ton of notes for this particular game this week, but I can hit a couple of quick points. Uh, Super Goals and Ghosts is the third game in the series collectively known as Ghosts and Goblins, which began with Ghosts and Goblins, released in arcades in Japan on July 7th of 1985. The first few games in the series, including the one that we're looking at today, follows the adventures of Sir Arthur, a knight typically tasked with rescuing a princess that has been kidnapped by some kind of big baddie character. The princess and baddie are different in the first few games. In Ghosts and Goblins, uh, Arthur must rescue Princess Prin Prin from Astaroth. In Ghosts, Ghouls and Ghosts, the second game in the series, it is Prin Prin again, but the big baddie is named Lucifer or Loki, depending on the version that you're playing. Usually, I think the American release has got Loki as the baddie. Uh, and in today's game, Super Ghouls and Ghosts, Arthur must rescue Princess Guinevere from Emperor Sardius, or Samael in the Japanese versions of the game. The common gameplay theme in most of this series is the difficulty. Uh, typically, Arthur can usually only take two hits. The first one strips him of his armor, and the second one kills him, as you can see in the demo video that's playing right now. Uh, there are hidden treasure chests throughout the game, which can sometimes contain traps, including in this game, the Conjurer, who will transform Arthur into a weaker form for several seconds. Uh, I believe it rotates between a kid, uh, a lady, a bug of some kind, and a seal, I want to say is the, the fourth one. Uh, there are important upgrades that are, were introduced in this particular game that we're looking at today, uh, including the ability to double jump, the ability to fire your weapon up or down, and I think that is exclusive to the lance weapon, but I might be wrong, and special armor sets that actually change your weapons to more powerful versions with unique effects. The big hook for the series is that players cannot reach the true ending of the game without beating it twice. After reaching and defeating the final boss, players are usually advised that they must complete the game again on a harder difficulty to reach the true ending. In the case of Super Ghouls and Ghosts, Arthur must also locate a weapon called the Goddess's Bracelet and use it to defeat the final boss to reach the true ending. I have never actually done that. I am terrible at this game, as we're probably going to find out very quickly. Uh, I've never actually beaten it at all. Not even just the one playthrough. One of the best parts of the original game, uh, Ghosts and Goblins, is the ending text, which verbatim reads as follows. Congratulation. This story is happy end. Thank you. Being the wise and courageous knight that you are, you feel strength welling in your body. Return to the starting point. Challenge again. <laughs> uh, I I don't know how you can't love bad uh, Japanese translation to English. It's it always sounds so silly and fun. Uh, yeah, that I I always love that, and that's like one of the. Um, more famous examples of bad translation that people usually think of when they're talking about uh, Japanese games that were translated to English. and Maybe they didn't do the best job of getting all of the uh, nuances of the English language right while they were translating it. The Ghosts and Goblins series also spawned two spin-off series. Gargoyle's Quest, which follows the adventures of one of Arthur's enemies, Firebrand, as he saves the ghoul realm in pursuit of greater power for himself. 
and Maximo, the spiritual successor series detailing the titular hero Maximo's quest to save his dear Queen Sophia from the clutches of his former advisor, Achille. And we will be looking at a game from each of those spin-off series in future videos, so stay tuned for that. Uh, that is all of my notes, so let's go ahead and get it started. I am a coward, so if there is an easy setting where I'm going to turn it on. Yeah, <laughs> I don't care if we actually beat the game today or not. We're just going to take a look at it, and I want to make at least a little progress. Oh, is there a text? I rented this game exactly one time, was turned off by the difficulty, and never came back to it. That doesn't mean there isn't a hook or appeal to the game. I think graphically, it is a very pretty game. Uh, Audio-wise, maybe not the high mark for Capcom games, but certainly something that would stick out. That enemy looks an awful lot like a bigger, furrier version of Firebrand, but not quite Firebrand, like kind of an off-model version of them. Uh, the one game that we do have from the Gargoyles Quest series that I'm going to uh, look at in a future episode or possibly series is uh, Demon's Crest, which was the Super Nintendo release for the Gargoyles Quest series. I always loved the dynamic environmental changes that occur in the, at least the first level. I don't know if they stick around the entire game. Up. Yay. Now this, uh, well, I knew it was going to happen eventually. This game is very much like Castlevania in one regard, not just the gothic theme, but also the fact that when you jump, you have no control over your momentum. You just, you go in the direction you jumped and you got to stick with it. Now, the advantage to this game versus that one is that you do have a double jump, so you can jump in one direction, then change and go another one later if you mess up. Cool. Whoa! Now, if you do lose your armor, if I'm not mistaken, there is a way to get it back. I think it's just finding it in a treasure chest, but it's been quite a while since I played this game. And again, I played it one time from a rental and never went back to it, so I, I just don't remember. Oh, no, you don't. Oh, cool. A scythe. Oh, that's kind of rad. I mean, it, it's a kind of a slow-firing weapon, which I don't love, but that's fine. Well, not slow-firing, but you only throw one at a time. Gotcha. I do like the unique animation for the attacks. Ooh. Oh, I just died. <laughs> I tell you what, the level layout here kind of reminds me of. And we have not looked at this game yet, but for a very particular reason. Uh, Wizards and Warriors. As I remember, every time I played that game, there was like a big map that would always kind of denote your progress because it had uh, special colors for each area, and they usually did correspond with whatever the layout of the map was when you were actually playing it. So like if you were in the dungeons that all had blue walls you would see on the map there was just a big blue area of the map and that was the one that you were going through next oh bad dog ah uh, no reason to go down there this time let's just stay out of trouble huh. all right so i think the daggers are pretty good aren't they yeah oh yeah look at that maybe don't do a ton of damage but you fire them very fast, and that's always a good thing. All right, I did not go down the first time. Woo! <laughs> Kill him! Get him, get him, get him, get him. Got him. Woo! Yeah, I'm pressing up and down to see if I can throw the daggers different, but it does not appear to be happening, so it might just be the lance. It might also be if you upgrade your weapon. Or armor, rather. That may be the only way that you would normally be able to do it. Alright, got him. As I recall, this area turns into like a big flooded part of the map. 
I don't know when. It's gotta be coming up. Oh, no, you don't. I know everyone hates hearing this, but this game is almost like the Dark Souls of, <laughs> of video games on the Super Nintendo before that was a thing. Oh, no, I didn't want the lance. Now you can't throw this one up or down either. I think it's just if you upgrade your equipment. That's the only time you can do it. And that is for a special set of armor that you don't find right away. I think you got to play for a while. Oh, well, that seemed kind of cheap. Yeah, it's like the second or third area before you actually get the uh, the upgraded armor. And it's two different types. There is a bronze set and a gold set. The gold set is obviously the better version. And I think the gold one, if it doesn't allow you to charge up your weapons, it has a different form of attack than the bronze armor weapons. Oh, looks like all the special chests that I had found earlier are just not showing up anymore. Or I'm not hitting the jump the way that I should. Oh! Oh! Oh, damn it! I tried to dodge it and I couldn't. Oh! <laughs> I kind of like the upward arc on this one. Ah, uh, we'll just... Ah! Uh, oh, did it again, damn it. <laughs> uh, I was so worried about the fireball underneath that I jumped right into my death. All right, there you go. Let's go ahead and wrap things. No, I'm not going to wrap it up that fast. So you have limited continues. I did not remember that, but boy, does that make this a much harder game to beat. I couldn't even make it out of the first level without dying. That's how serious the difficulty is on this game. Oh, I shouldn't have taken it. Get out of here. Did I just... Oh, damn it. I just want to take this thing! I want to touch the little... The little Arthur doll. I want to show you guys on the doll where <laughs> they hurt me. <laughs> uh, that's so awful. All right. Die. What is this? I'll take that again. Or maybe I haven't taken it. I have now. There are definitely elements of this that feel very Castlevania in their inspiration and design. This feels a lot like using holy water. I'm not saying they ripped off Castlevania, but I don't know, maybe they ripped off Castlevania. Or maybe Castlevania ripped off this game. It could go either way. Probably shouldn't have done this. But I'm fine. Kinda like this one. Duck. Oh god, this double jump is just getting me in trouble. I gotta stop doing it. Hey, hey! Cool! All right, I didn't know if we were actually going to see that today, but yeah, here we go. This is the bronze armor. Huh. Oh! I feel like we got to check out all the different weapons using this armor, but I don't think I'll actually be able to do that. Although this is doing quite well. I remember the bronze armor having a really cool dagger. But, oh! On I don't. On it. Use this a bit. Oh, thank you. Oh, no. Oh! Oh! That could have been really bad. Duck. Thank you. Don't get hit. Don't get hit. No! Oh, okay, well, that was not what I intended to do, but it worked. Cool. Come over here. Thank you. I want a clear path to this chest. 
What is it? <gasps> the gold armor! Sweet! And as I recall, if you stand still, you can tank one hit with your shield, and that's it. Okay, there you go. So there's the upgraded attack for this. Which, uh, it's kind of like an option. Again, here they are, stealing ideas from Konami. Noted thieves of ideas, Capcom. <laughs> Alright, move forward. Go, 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 go. I will say I'm probably doing something really stupid taking my time here, because the game is on a clock, and I'm not making much progress very quickly here, so we need to kind of step up the pace. Just get moving. Now, as I recall, what I did wrong here is if the waves are coming in, your best bet is to stand on one of these pillars because they don't wash away. Yep. All right. Oh, oh. Gotcha. All right. Who? All right. Got it. Stay in the pillar. Don't get hit by that thing. I'm dead. <laughs> Ah, this game. Still as hard as I remember. I will say this, and this is uh, good on the part of this particular game. Not always the case. It's fun hard. It's not frustrating, rip your hair out. I'm not having a good time at all doing this difficult. It's kind of like, well, you know, It'd be nice if the game didn't feel cheap in certain jumps, but I don't feel like it's necessarily the game's fault or the design. It's just me being sloppy and careless. Huh. Come on. I guess that one's not going to reappear. Oh. Come on. Get out of here. Yeah, it looks like certain chests just don't come back on the second or third run. That is fine. Oh, nailed him. Didn't kill him, but I nailed him. Oh, don't you dare turn around. Gotcha. I kind of don't want to keep using this torch. I, I would prefer something that has a longer range, but... I don't know if I'm going to find another weapon or not. Get out of here. Bad dog. Especially here. This sucks. All right, there we go. Made it. Oh, long jump. Stay. Oh, no! Oh, you bastard. I really wanted to make it to at least the second level. This is absolutely the reason why I never played this game again after the one time I rented it. I'm enjoying what's happening, but maybe not in the way that it's like, oh, I, I gotta play this multiple times to see what else there is. There we go. Give me more armor. Ah, that's fine, I'll take that. Come on, die. There we go. Quit wasting my time. Uh, oh, I'm going to go in here. There we go. Come on, I know you're here. Or maybe I got to go forward a little. Oh, seriously? It's just not going to appear? Whatever. Oh! 
Stop it. I hate these. You can't break them just by attacking them, and they block your path until they finish spawning in. Oh, oh, come on, that felt cheap. That should have counted as a duck. That was bullshit. making the best use of it, but I do like the double jump in this one because it does allow you to get a little bit of uh, a reprieve if you're about to jump into your doom. You can kind of get away from a, a screw up on your part, a botch. Definitely not something that was in the first game. Oh, wow. I went back in. I had so much fun, I tried to do it a second time. Why are you not spawning? Get over him. I don't want to fight you. Oh, no, you don't. I just did a backflip. Duck. All right, let's go get this one. Oh, no, that's a lot of wolves. I don't like this at all. I'll take the daggers. Yes. I like the daggers. Hip. Oh, don't die. Don't die. Oh, no, you don't. Oh, crap. I didn't want to do that. Maybe I did, though. Oh, come on, man. What are you? Give me my armor back. No, I said give me my armor back. Nope. And go. I'm sure you can get that money somehow, but I don't want it. What I want to do is live. This might be a mistake. Oh. No, I got him. Cool. Who? Stay. Oh, come on, game! Why is he spitting eyeballs? You know, a checkpoint would be really nice as well. I feel like I'm wasting a ton of time trying to get there and then not doing anything special. I'm just going to run straight for it. Maybe that's what I've been doing wrong this whole time. Ignore everything that is not directly in your path and going to kill you and just go to the end. Except chests. Yeah, I'll take that. That's good. Hip, hip. No. Oh. <laughs> Screw you, dog. Oh, I didn't want to do this, but that's fine. We're fine. We're fine. This is fine. <laughs> the game world is on fire. This is fine. What are you? Yes. Yes. Yeah, I remember this one being really cool. And it looks like my memory is correct. It's like way better lances. You shoot them faster and they do way more. Uh, well, they have a way bigger hitbox. All right, go. What are you? Gold armor? Yes. Don't you. Don't you do it. Let me get my armor. Let's see what this does. Oh, that is awesome. I don't want that item. I know they gave it to me, but I don't want it. 
What I want to do is I want to get to the end of the goddamn area. <laughs> Stay. Oh, see you later, bro. Thank you. Oh, I overjumped! <laughs> oh, damn it! <sighs> nah, we're not stopping here. I'm going to give it one more try to get out of this area. Can you believe there are people who have beaten this game? <laughs> I'd just like to beat this first level. That's how dire things are getting. There we go. I was going to say, I want to see the item. No, this is a better one. No, you don't. Jerks. No! Ooh, ha ha ha. That should have hit me. Whee! Whee! Oh, come on. Get out of the chest. I, I wish I knew what the metric was for these chests appearing. Is it time based? Is it the area you're in? Is it jumping? I thought it was tied to jumping, but I have not found a consistent result for that. Oh, God damn it. Right into him. OK, yeah, 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 yeah. Let me do my thing. See, this time... Oh, 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 oh. Get out of there. It is. It's almost like it's it's timing-based. The faster you run, the more chests to pop up. I will say, and I don't know if there's any truth to this, this game has a particular font that I feel like was reused for... The, I can't remember what's called, Magical Quest starring Mickey Mouse, I think it's the name of it. Like this kind of, whoa, old school, like fantasy font would be a good way to put it, because there's italization on a lot of the letters or itali italicies. I'm not sure what the, how you say that, but um, stuff that you didn't see on very many games for Capcom. God damn it. You can't slow down, but you can't go too fast. The frustration of this game. Just go. Go, go, go. I'd love to get some armor, but I don't I don't plan on that happening. Oh, come on. Give me some armor. That's fine. I am not sorry that devs have moved away from games having stupidly stiff gameplay. It's one of the, the, the lasting legacies of the old school Castlevania games, like the one we just looked at a couple weeks ago, that I don't think is good. I don't think that kind of rigid character can only move a certain way when they jump, and if you do commit to a jump, you pay the price if you touch an enemy type gameplay. I don't think that makes for fun gameplay. Don't make me feel sorry for my choices. <laughs> if I have the, the reflexes to respond to a mistake, let me respond, you know? Ha ha. Alright, so this is the part that's been killing me every time. Gotcha. Stay right here. Don't over jump. Oh, I got to go back and see what this is. Something good. 
No. I don't want it. Turn away. No. Did the items here despawn? No! I didn't want that! Ah, whatever. So get to this and then immediately get to here. Oh! Oh! Did I make it out? I think a boss is coming up. Holy crap, is there anything they haven't stolen from Konami? Weird pustules, remember life force? This thing is gonna... Oh, come on! Those damn pustules! All right, um... As much as I love flailing helplessly trying to get out of the very first level, I think we're gonna go ahead and stop here. Plus, if there was one to be offered for the gameplay up to this point, I do notice that I am getting more credits as I play the game, and it's probably tied to the amount of money that I've been picking up. I don't know if that's the case. Let's see. Just start. Yeah, it's it's not tied to the money. Maybe that's how I'm earning more credits, but at least they're not punishing me with like a limited pool of continues and saying if you burn through your one or two extra continues, you're screwed and... Oh, I reached a halfway point. You know what? No, no, no. We're not going to stop here then. We're going to try to beat this first level. Once we beat the first level, once we beat it, not if we beat it, I'm going to beat it. We'll go ahead and wrap up and do final thoughts. Yeah, they totally stole this design from, <laughs> from Life Force. I'm just seeing a bunch of like pustules. You dick. Of course, it's a thing that you can't hurt. And it's about to fall backwards, isn't it? No? Yep, there it goes. See? You. Look at the little beans! I'm not gonna be able to get it from here, am I? No, of course not. Oh, shoot. Oh, come on! Why the hell did the pustule have to go backwards? What do these pustules have to do with anything, either? Like, at least it made sense in Life Force. In Life Force, you were flying through a bunch of organisms. That was, like, the whole point of the game was the fact that you were, like, trying to kill, I don't know, like, an infecting force for whatever the... the special lizard was in the game, I think. Armor? No, but this is good. I'll take that. Oh, no, you don't. Nope. Nope. What is this? Give me armor. Yes! Oh, look at that! Three! Do they heat seek? Ah, I don't know. Couldn't tell. Ah, uh, what's the safe way to get to that? Oh, damn it! I hate these pustule things. They suck. not avoid your fate. All right, give me my armor back, please. No, I said give me my armor back. Thank you. Yeah, they do heat seek. Look at that. Oh, that was almost a shorted jump. Almost, but not quite.
that's how you do it. Oh, shoot. Oh, look at that. I'll take it. I'll take that, too. Let's see what this does. It stops the game? I think that's a screen clearing hit, which might be useful here if this is the boss. And I think the land is going to get washed away. Oh, no, you don't. See ya. Take the key for coming in. <laughs> okay. We'll see how far I can get in the second level before I die or run out of lives or whatever, and then we'll call today. I did what I hoped to do today, which is beat one level in <laughs> Super Ghouls and Ghosts. I don't know if I've ever gotten this far. All right, I was worried that that might hurt me. No, it, it doesn't until they turn into ghosts. Let's see if this does what I thought it did. It does not. It just... It did nothing. So I don't know what that did for me. Oh, the conjurer! Ha, 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 I beat him. Oh, oh. Can I get to that? No, I can't. Oh, no. No! Oh, damn it! I'm dead. Because Arthur can't swim. All right, let's for some luck on the armor again. An axe? Oh, that's, that's kind of cool. I like that. All right, well, we don't need to go all the way over there. Let's go this way this time. So it looks like they're committing to a path before moving on. So like, if you just dodge wherever they're headed initially, you're fine. I kind of like that. Oh, shoot. I liked the axe. I didn't want to give that up. Whatever. Ah, what? I jumped right into a mimic. Oh, that felt dirty. All right, we'll stop there. That's fine. Like I said, I was not expecting to beat the game today. It is an incredibly difficult game, and uh, that certainly has not changed over time. Doesn't matter how good you get uh, playing video games over the years, some games are just impenetrably difficult, and this is certainly one of them. I, I uh, am amazed by people who can not only beat games like this, but they can basically speed run them because they know what to expect, when to expect it, and how to build the perfect build to make it through this game, in many cases without taking a single hit. And in fact, in most cases, they have runs where people will do it without ever taking a single hit or they have to restart the entire run. That's insane. I couldn't make it through one level without taking multiple hits. That's uh, that's incredible that people can handle that kind of stuff. Final thoughts on Super Ghouls and Ghosts. Uh, graphically, I think this is a very pretty game. Not only does it hold up today, but I mean, back then it was a gorgeous game. Uh, like the background uh, details that they have. Sorry, I just heard a vehicle really loud outside of my house. Um, the The game is beautiful. The background assets are a nice touch. The kind of uh, the the Super Nintendo is really good about adding parallax elements, where you know the background moves at a slightly different speed than what you're doing, so it adds a sense of depth uh, to a, a 2D plane. And this game certainly did have some of those. I mean, it wasn't everywhere, but the few spots where you could see it, it, it added nice uh, detail and depth to the environment. Um, I like that they added the upgrades they did to this game, even though I never played the first or second one. So I can't compare what the experience was between this one and those games. I do think in this case, the double jump is a, a nice opportunity, even though I wasn't doing a great job of it to evade a, a, a hit that's basically going to happen because, again, 
jumping in this game, and this is a big problem that uh, platformers or, or you know, run and gun type games like this had back in the day, is uh, the the fact that your jump has a momentum to it that you're committed to the second you start it, and you cannot stop even if you're about to go off a ledge or you're about to hit an enemy or, you know, uh, just you made a, a miscalculation on landing on a platform. The double jump can help you with that in a couple of ways. One, if you're about to hit an enemy, you can change direction one time with that second jump. Two, let's say you did overshoot a platform and you're about to go over it. If you just hit uh, jump again with the D-pad in a neutral position, you go straight up and come straight down. So you can land on platforms in a way that maybe in the past that was something that you would overshoot and you're just screwed. You're not going to be able to uh, correct your path. So that was a nice touch. I really do like the variety of weapons. I think all of them had f fun elements to them. The one that I think maybe looked cool but wasn't necessarily all that useful was that scythe weapon because it had a very flat uh, trajectory. Uh, just my left to right, just like the daggers and the, the lances, and it didn't seem like it was doing very much damage. You would throw one and it would hit the enemy, and then you'd have to wait until it either made contact or left the screen before you could throw another one. So it almost feels like they put that in there, but they didn't know how to differentiate it from any of the other weapons that just go straight left to right. Certainly not the size of the projectile, certainly not the damage. It's just a worse version of the dagger and the lance. Maybe when you get the armor that upgrades uh, your weapon, it gets better, but it certainly didn't feel that way here. Uh, I did like, in particular, using the daggers and the crossbow because I think both of them had utility uh, that, that made them kind of ab above and beyond the others. Uh, the torch, again, is just the uh, Capcom's poor man version of Holy Water from Castlevania. The, uh, the arrows and the daggers, uh, they were different because in the case of the daggers, you could throw, throw like three of them before, you, uh, before they had to either leave the screen or hit an enemy, and you could throw more. The crossbow was nice because it added uh, an element of verticality to your attacks. I mean, even the low shot of the base of the weapon had a little bit of a, a verticality to it so that it could hit enemies that were maybe just a little bit above where Arthur was attacking from, uh, and that was nice. The armor is very cool in this game, the, the upgraded versions at least, uh, where you can get uh, upgraded weapon attacks and then also like special attacks, which I wasn't making, uh, getting much opportunity to make the most of. Would have been nice if I could have gotten more opportunities to use it. Again, it doesn't look like the armor is in set locations. It almost, from what I could tell, was tied either to your score or your progress in the game map. And I, I just don't know what the, the metric is there, what it is. It, or is it progress-based? Is it uh, jumping at a certain time? Is it tied to your score? Is it tied to the length of time you've been alive without taking a hit? I don't know what it is. It could just be completely random. That is a possibility. Uh, I don't know if there's an opportunity while you're playing the game to ever get your base armor back in a chest if you lose it, if you're down to just your skivvies. As far as I know, all you can do is get the bronze or the gold armor from chests. I didn't see an opportunity to pick up just regular armor. But then again, I was doing so poor, it's possible that it's there. I just didn't play long enough or, or safely enough to ever find it. The enemies are, are fun, and I do like kind of like the gothic element to the game. I mean, not pure gothic because, you know, you're just playing as a standard knight going through all these areas, but you have all your normal spooky monsters from, you know, type of gothic type, type games, zombies, wolves, werewolves, or whatever. Um, the, the pustules was kind of strange because it, it genuinely felt like someone was just robbing from Konami's uh, greatest hits and throwing it into their game. Maybe those are in uh, Ghosts and Goblins. I don't know. But frankly, just seeing them in this game just made me go, why not only in, in their appearance, but also in the environment that they were found in with that kind of blue background with the foreground that was just kind of a, a thread of organic-looking webbing over top. Now, if I got a screen grab here, I'll put it up just to show com by comparison what I'm thinking of versus what uh, what this game was showing us. 
But man, that looked an awful lot like Life Force, or at least parts of Life Force, where you had to shoot weird little nodules of, like, flesh, essentially, because all the enemies in that one were supposed to be based on organic life forms, or most of them were. And, and here, it just it didn't fit what you were seeing up to this point. So it didn't make sense that those were included. Um, it is a very difficult game. But again, I think there is a difference, and uh, for comparison, we just looked at Castlevania two weeks ago. That game got to a point where the enemies felt unfair in not only how hard they were to hit safely, but how, how many of them were appearing, how much damage they were doing to me, uh, the paths that they took versus my attack options. In the case of this one, it felt almost like everything that was happening to me was just not, me not being cautious. Maybe jumping into a hit that I didn't need to jump into, or not paying attention when the waves would come over and the waves washing away the soil I was standing on dying. When I knew if I stood on the, the stone pillars, or maybe they were bone pillars, whatever, the waves wouldn't wash me away. And I just wasn't being careful enough. This game felt difficult but fair versus difficult for difficulty's sake in the case of Castlevania. And that was not fun towards the end. And I think it was becoming quite apparent during that play uh, of, of the first Castlevania game that I wasn't having fun at the end. It was starting to become frustrating. Here, even if I was griping, it was more just me not being cautious or paying attention to my surroundings. So that it was on me. And I had fun playing it. Um, my regret for this game is I think I regret just never outright buying it. I mean, the, the first time I played it kind of turned me off because I felt like I wasn't making any progress and it was frustrating back then, but I also may not have realized, because I kind of gave up on it very quickly, that even though you have a limited number of credits at the very beginning, you clearly get more. Because this is, what, the third, fourth time that I continued? And I still have six credits? So clearly they're giving me more. It may also have been that I never changed the difficulty when I played it that first time and it was on the standard difficulty, and maybe you don't get credits if you're playing it on the easiest difficulty. Of course, you're playing it on the low difficulty, that probably means the game's going to tell you that you cannot get the true ending unless you play on normal or whatever the hard mode is, which would have just turned me off completely to ever trying to beat the game. But what I experienced today, I had fun with. So, yeah, I, this is definitely one that if I had been able to get it, and this is a very early release on the Super Nintendo. Let's see, the, the game came out, when did it come out? Uh, I already forgot my own notes on when it was released. November 28th of 91. The Super Nintendo released in the United States in August. So this was only four months after the console released. This is a very early game in the uh, release schedule for the Super Nintendo. So I I'm kind of surprised. Not only is it graphically a very stunningly pretty game, uh, even today, um, but gameplay-wise, it feels, it feels fun and not dated. Again, the jumping, I don't think, is a, a relic of the past that has necessarily aged well and is something that people should continue to follow through with. If you're making a game where you're literally dodging enemies on a 2D plane, I don't think it behooves the developer or the gamer to have a jump of any kind where you cannot control the momentum once you've already left the ground. I don't care if it's not realistic. Nothing about this game is realistic, okay? Arthur throws, what, three, four, five thousand lances before the end of the game? Where are they coming from? That's not realistic. They should give you one lance, you throw it, and then you have to go pick it up before you can throw it again. That would be realism. So why does the jumping have to have a, a reality to its momentum? That has never been good. But the rest of the game, I had fun. Even the the... the difficulty that I was having just getting out of the first level. I was having fun doing it, so I don't see that as a, a bad. I think this is definitely one that I would have enjoyed having back when it initially released instead of just renting it the one time, getting angry and quitting. Now, Act Razor 2, that game can go f*** itself. <laughs> but this one, I don't mind the difficulty on. That's going to do it for this episode of Rental Regrets. As always, I do appreciate each of you watching, and I will see you next time.